Number five on this list is the pyramids. The Great Pyramids are located in Egypt and are some of the oldest structures on the entire planet. The pyramids are said to have been constructed over 4,500 years ago and were made to act as the burial grounds for the pharaohs of Egypt. The Great Pyramid, which is the biggest of all of them, is over 450 feet tall with a base of over 750 feet wide. That's a really big structure and acted as the largest structure on Earth for almost 4,000 years. It should also be noted that the pyramids are made up of massive stone blocks. For the Great Pyramid, it's estimated that 2.3 million stone blocks are what keep it standing to this day. Every block of the Great Pyramid also weighs approximately 2.5 to 15 tons. Just a reminder that a ton is 2,000 pounds, so there were some blocks that could have weighed close to 30,000 pounds. All of this is completely unbelievable. So unbelievable, in fact, that people think something else might have been at play in making them. It's currently believed that these were made by humans. It took thousands of humans to construct, but when you think about how monstrous these creations are and the technology that humans had back in that day, it becomes very hard to believe that we were capable of doing that. This has led people to the theory of aliens. These pyramids are also built to face the precise magnetic north, which makes people wonder how the ancient Egyptians could have possibly got that information. The theory is that these aliens came down and built the pyramids and the ancient Egyptians mistook them for gods. This is why in some ancient Egyptian drawings we see gods flying around. The Daily Star also reports the speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second, and the geographic coordinates for the Great Pyramid coincide with that if you just move the decimal points over several spaces. They believe that this was a clue from the aliens for us to discover later. Frankly, as cool as aliens are, I would honestly rather believe that humans made the pyramids. It's pretty cool to know that almost 5,000 years ago, our species was able to make something like that. I feel like I have a little bit of pride for those ancient Egyptians. Number four on this list is the Bermuda Triangle. You've obviously heard about the Bermuda Triangle before and the lore that accompanies this extremely mysterious place. If you don't know what it is though, then the History Channel classifies it as a mythical section of the Atlantic Ocean roughly bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico where dozens of ships and airplanes have disappeared. These disappearances have continued to this day but started hundreds of years ago. Basically since people started crossing over the Atlantic Ocean and records of ships were being kept. In fact, it's believed that William Shakespeare's The Tempest was based on a real shipwreck that happened at the Bermuda Triangle. So legends of this place can at least be dated back to when he wrote that play, which was in the early 1600s. In 1918, the legend of the Bermuda Triangle reached an all-time high when the USS Cyclops, a massive ship from the United States, sank to the bottom of the ocean. This ship was over 500 feet long and had over 300 people on board. It was a horrible catastrophe when it happened. What made this even more stupefying was that the ship had the capability to send out a distress signal and didn't do so, making everyone wonder what on earth happened. What has caused all these shipwrecks and plane crashes over the years is still unknown, but there are some theories. Some people believe that the Bermuda Triangle is home to a massive sea monster, potentially the Kraken or something like that. A massive tentacled monster with the ability to drag a ship down to the depths of the ocean and eat all who are on board. Some people believe that there may even be a wormhole that is out there in the middle of the ocean. A wormhole is a ripple through space time which experts believe would act as a portal to another time and dimension. The Bermuda Triangle has also been called the Devil's Triangle before, indicating that some people believe this place could be the work of the devil or some strong sea demons out there. Nobody really knows the true cause of the Bermuda Triangle. And considering it's been talked about for hundreds of years, we may never know. Number three on this list is Stonehenge. Stonehenge is very similar to the pyramids having been built roughly 5,000 years ago and being so difficult to construct that people think some sort of paranormal events must have transpired. Located in Wiltshire, England, Stonehenge is a monument that features massive stones standing vertically that weigh roughly 25 tons. That's 50,000 pounds of weight that these monstrous stones have to them. The monument is oriented towards the sunrise on the summer solstice, but other than that, not a lot of people know why it's there or what its purpose was. Now it is owned by the crown and considered a heritage site, but still people wonder 
Why was it put there in the first place? Some theories involve its effect on sound waves. When two people are playing a pipe and you walk around the stones, then you'll notice an effect where they cancel each other out. Some people have even chalked it up as being an ancient sex symbol, believe it or not. However, the most popular theory is similar to the pyramids in believing that it's aliens. I tend to believe aliens were capable of this more than the periods, to be honest. They are certainly arranged in a strange fashion and they have no set purpose. How is it possible for humans to lug stones that are 50,000 pounds to a location where there aren't that many stones to begin with. Stonehenge just screams like the sort of place where something paranormal happened in my opinion. Number two on this list is Jesus. I feel like this wouldn't be a complete list if I didn't include one of the most mysterious events that occur in all of history. Jesus lived 2000 years ago during a tumultuous time. His life was one that we all remember and has inspired millions of people since he passed. His death is where something paranormal may have taken place though. Jesus died by crucifixion at the hands of the Romans. This was ordered by the governor Pilate who felt the pressures from the Roman people and felt like he had to give in to them. The crucifixion process lasted for over six hours apparently until Jesus finally gave his last breath. After he died, he was taken to his tomb which was closed off and shut by a massive stone. This tomb was guarded by several officers for days until on the third day it said that the rock moved and Jesus ascended from that tomb to heaven. His body was no longer in the tomb on this day and the belief that he went to heaven spread throughout the land. Now a question a lot of people ask is how do we know for sure that his body was gone and that tomb was actually empty? Now we know that because after he was gone and his followers were claiming he was resurrected, then the best way for the Romans to stop that theory would have been to produce the body which they were never capable of doing. So where did it go? Well, it's widely believed that Jesus ascended to heaven, that God acted and brought his son home to him. Maybe this event is less of a paranormal event and more of a miracle, but I still wanted to include it in this video. Number one on this list is the Dropa Stones. The legends of the Dropa Stones is a little bit up in the air, but if it is true, then there is certainly something paranormal afoot. The Dropa Stones are a collection of 716 circular discs that are said to be over 12,000 years old. They have very strange markings on them in a a language that hardly anyone is familiar with. These stones were apparently discovered by Chu Pei Te, a Chinese archaeologist in the 1930s who found them inside some abandoned caves. They made their way to a translator who was able to decipher some of the markings and learn that they were referring to humans and aliens. So the theory is that aliens were present 12,000 years ago and had some serious interactions with humans back then. Now there are a few reasons why we can't take this as being full fact. One. It's possible that the translator who was in charge of deciphering them is wrong. We can't say for sure that they're familiar with the intricacies of language 12,000 years ago. Number two is that today, nobody knows where these stones have gone. They aren't in a museum and their location is unknown. And this is really hard to believe considering there is 716 of them and they would have been one of the biggest archaeological finds in years. All of this being said though, if these stones are real and our translator was correct, then that is undeniable proof of an alien presence from 12,000 years ago, which is pretty cool to think about. Number five on this list is the Dancing Plague of 1518. That's right guys, you heard that right. A plague about dancing. Honestly, I'd never heard of this before and in my whole time working on this channel, this is actually the coolest and strangest thing that I've ever come across. So in Strasbourg, Alsace, which is now modern day France, in the year 1518, from July all the way to September, People just started dancing. For months, hundreds of people were dancing in the streets of France and they couldn't stop. It's said that one woman started dancing in the streets one day and then some more came and they just kept going for months with absolutely no reason at all. People started thinking that this was the cause of a demonic possession or some ghost that was making people lose their minds, but in actuality, nobody had any idea why these people were doing this. This wasn't a casual waltz either. These people were going hard. These people went so hard that they literally danced themselves to death. I can't possibly imagine going so hard at the club that I died, but that's basically what happened here with these people. There are actual claims that at one point in the heat of all this dancing, up to 15 people were dying per day just from dancing. This death kept happening and these people would continue dancing around all of these bodies. This plague went on until September when it just suddenly subsided and that was that. 
No explanation, no reasoning behind it. They just went hard for several months and then stopped. That's why everyone thinks that something demonic has to be the cause of all this. Some people have speculated that food poisoning may have played some role, but that just doesn't make any sense to me because it went on for months. Seriously folks, please comment down below what you think about this or some theories about why this happened because it has me pretty baffled. Number four on this list is the lost city of Atlantis. Atlantis is a city that is considered to be a utopian society in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It was first documented by Plato in two of his works, Timaeus and Critias. Now even though Atlantis is often referred to as a city these days, back then Plato described it as an island. This island was located in the Atlantic and was said to be pretty massive, bigger than Asia Minor and Libya combined. This island, or city, was extremely wealthy and had a surplus of resources. This is what led them to being considered a utopia and a highly advanced group. Now Plato describes a great battle between these Atlanteans and the Athenians and says that after lots of hard fighting, the Athenians eventually prevailed in the war. Then several massive earthquakes caused the earth to shift and the entire island of Atlantis was swallowed up by the sea and now rests at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. Many people have speculated on how accurate these tales from Plato are, with experts believing that this could just all be a myth. However, the legend of Atlantis started to circulate around Europe many years later and people began searching for this lost city. Nobody has found it to this day, but that doesn't mean that it never existed. Maybe we're just thinking about it the wrong way. Some people have thought that this entire city of Atlantis could have been aliens coming down to Earth and that potentially this island was never really an island to begin with. Plato does describe the society as being a utopia, and an explanation for that would be aliens that have far better technology than we do. Maybe when this island apparently disappeared, these aliens just left. Now that does beg the question, if they're so advanced, how on earth could the ancient Athenians beat them in a battle, which I do think is a very fair point. I do believe that Plato and the people after him have exaggerated this story, and the full truth has probably been lost in history. But I also believe that this tale didn't just come out of nowhere, and something potentially paranormal could be at hand. Number three on this list is the Coral Castle. The Coral Castle is a limestone structure located in Florida. It is super unique and has these strange limestone rocks that have been carved into various figures. Now there's nothing inherently cursed about this place. However, similar to the pyramids or Stonehenge that we covered in our last video, people wonder how on earth this place was made. Edward Lee Scallon was a self-taught Russian engineer who came to America. He lived from 1887 to 1951 and is credited with being the creator of the Coral Castle. What's absolutely crazy about this story though, is he constructed the structure all by himself. This is what baffles people to this day. How on earth is it possible that one man in the early 1900s was capable of moving these limestones and carving them the way that they are single handedly? These stones weigh thousands of pounds and there's no way that a man would ever be able to lift these things with sheer strength. Now he was an engineer and people have speculated that it was potentially the use of magnetism, something that he was fascinated with in his life. When asked how he was able to do this, he replied, I understand the laws of weight and leverage and I know the secrets of the people who built the pyramids. This kind of makes sense, but with the pyramids, they had thousands of people working on them all at once. You were only one man. People have theorized that Edward actually had some supernatural abilities that he was hiding from the public. This could honestly be believable because his personality was apparently extremely eccentric and very strange. However Edward was able to construct the Coral Castle, it truly is remarkable. Number two on this list is the oldest ghost story of all time. Ever wonder when all this started? When did humans start believing in ghosts, or when did we have our first encounter with a poltergeist? Well, a 3,500 year old tablet may have the earliest depiction of a ghost as we know them today. This is a small tablet that was made in ancient Babylon and is considered by some experts to be one of the first, if not the first, written depiction of a ghost. The ghostly drawings could be easily missed and you have to really pay attention if you're going to see it. An expert on the subject, Irvin Finkel, says, You'd probably never give it a second thought because the area where the drawings are looks like it's got no writing. But when you examine it and hold it under a lamp, those figures leap out at you across time in the most startling way. The tablet goes into detail on how to get rid of ghosts and calls for an exorcist. It explains how this exorcist must make figurines of a man and a woman and also speak the words of Mesopotamian god Shemesh to get rid of the ghost. There's also a warning to the reader to 
not turn around, potentially an indicator that a ghost could be behind you or you could risk getting sucked into the underworld if your focus isn't steady. This tablet also lists a bunch of materials that can be used in rituals and that can be used to prevent ghosts from appearing in the first place. This is super interesting because it means that ghosts and spirits visiting the living can be traced all the way back to the ancient Mesopotamians. We were having paranormal events happen to us thousands of years ago and the action of exercising demons and ghosts, it all started with these guys. One could argue that they were the founders and innovators of a lot of our ghostly practices and knowledge to this day. Number one on this list is Oak Island. Oak Island is a very mysterious island that has been shrouded in lore for years. It's a privately owned island off the south shore of Nova Scotia, Canada. It has so many rumors surrounding it that it's even got its own television show called The Curse of Oak Island that has eight seasons under its belt. This is a reality television show by the History Channel where they explore the mysteries of Oak Island and considering they're on season eight, it's fair to say that there have been quite a few mysteries. The one that's gained the most international fame though is the Money Pit. The Money Pit is supposedly a place on Oak Island where there's a plethora of buried treasure waiting for somebody to dig it up. This treasure was left by the pirate Captain William Kidd who lived from 1645 to 1701. There's said to be vast riches here, however no one's been able to find it up until this point. This is largely because finding buried treasure can be extremely difficult, but also due to the curse that surrounds it. The curse that hovers over this treasure states that seven men will die in search of the treasure before it's found. To this day, there have actually been six deaths associated with this buried treasure. That means that if one more person was to die whilst they're looking for it, then the treasure would either reveal itself or the next person who goes looking for it would be the one who finds it. Problem with this is that there's one more person who needs to die and I don't think that anyone wants to be that unlucky number seven. Other than this pirate treasure, there's also rumored to be some extremely valuable and mystical items here. Never before seen Shakespearean plays, the Holy Grail, and the Ark of the Covenant have all been linked to Oak Island. If searching for cursed treasure is your cup of tea, and this is definitely the place for you. Kicking off at number five, the Long U Caves. And this place in particular is absolutely mind blowing given the fact that if it was indeed made by human civilization, then we've got to really take a look at how capable our ancient ancestors actually were at building things. Picture this, in 1992 in the small Chinese village of Long Yu, the locals had lived for centuries besides a small series of ponds that littered the landscape. Local legend believed that these ponds were bottomless, infinite wells of water, but one local in particular named Wu and I set out to put that legend to the test. After pooling his money together with another villager, he purchased a pump and completely drained one of the ponds and that's when Wu and I discovered that it wasn't a pond at all, but instead the flooded entrance to an ancient series of man-made caves. But when I say caves, I don't just mean a few interesting holes in the earth, I mean hand-carved caves, each the size of roughly 1,000 square meters, reaching up to heights of up to 100 feet. Inside, the ceilings, the walls, the pillars that maintain their structural integrity were all finished in the exact same manner hand carved with a series of parallel bands and intricate markings. Now, no one has any clue how the hell these caves were created or who created them, but researchers have found that they date back to at least 220 BCE, a period that predates the ancient Qin Dynasty, although no trace of their construction or even their existence has ever been located in the historic record. In fact, up until their discovery in 1992, the Long Yu Caves were forgotten to the sands of time. It makes you think, what else is lurking down there, right? Coming in next at number four, Petra. And yes, of course, this is the scene that I was alluding to in our opening clip, the ancient city of Petra, described by UNESCO as one of the most precious cultural properties of mankind's cultural heritage, and perhaps one of the most amazing archeological wonders on this fair planet. This place is fascinating, and it's a monument to the fact that we really have no idea how capable humanity has been for thousands upon thousands of years. Petra, originally known to its inhabitants as Rakmu, is believed to have been settled perhaps as early as 9,000 BC. BC, although earlier estimations have been suggested. However, by the 5th century BC, it is believed that the city of Petra itself was settled by the mysterious Nabataean Kingdom, an ancient conglomerate of Bedouin tribes that were incredibly astute traders and economists who for the most part were a nomadic people but recognised the significance of Petra's geographical location. And for the most part, that was fit exactly for Petra's purpose, as it quickly became a massive central hub for trading routes across the world, gaining the Nabataean Kingdom in 
incredible wealth in the process. But I mean you just need to look at Petra to start scratching your head at the incredible intricacies of its design. I don't say this lightly because the rogue city of Petra is an absolutely stunning feat of engineering at a time where nomadic societies weren't exactly known for their capability in raising wonders of the world. So how was it built? Well the leading theory so far is that the Nabataean people harness the location susceptibility to flash flooding, gradually carving the narrow passages into the city like network that we now know. Either way, whatever the truth to it, Petra is an ancient wonder to behold. Oh and also archaeologists have just discovered that there's a gigantic monumental structure buried beneath the sands of Petra. So yeah, do with that information as you will. Swinging in next at number 3, Derin Kuyu underground city. And if things weren't already crazy enough, what if I told you that there is an ancient, highly advanced underground complex carved beneath the central Anatolian city of Derinkuyu in Turkey that is believed to have been large enough to have sheltered up to 20,000 people and more than likely connects several other similar underground complexes across the ancient historical site of Cappadocia. Yeah. My thoughts exactly. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this one because as the eons of time have slowly shifted by, countless people have taken shelter within Derin Kuyu, using it as their home across the ages and because of that it's incredibly difficult to pinpoint just exactly when it was built. Its purpose however is relatively clear, it's a multi-level city built underground carved from the soft volcanic rock of the region. It consists of 18 stories that descend deep into the earth comprised of sophisticated carved shafts that house the complex multitude of amenities, communal rooms, wine cellars, oil presses, stables, even entire chapels. Each floor of the city can be closed off by a series of large stone doors which in theory makes it some kind of ancient underground bunker given the other facilities gathered over time. Historically speaking the Phrygians of the 8th century BCE were the first alleged inhabitants of the vast underground city. Although the fact of the matter remains, we may never truly know who built this place. Scholars have given many suggestions, primarily being a sect of the ancient Persians or the the Hittites but I'm not entirely sure. Put a pin in this one because there are many many more secrets to be learned from this. Next up at number 2, Nan Madol. And what if I told you that this place in particular was the source of inspiration for none other than HP Lovecraft's sunken city of Rillier. As in yes, in his house at Rillier, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. That one. But if that's not impressive enough, the ancient megalithic architecture of Nan Madol, just off the coast of the island of Pyonpei, which is part of the remote islands of Micronesia, are something else entirely. And really, I don't know what to think when it comes to trying to decipher the eternal enigma that is Nan Madol, often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. There's a reason it has left archaeologists scratching their heads ever since its rediscovery in the early 19th century. Now, carbon dating has indicated that the construction of the massive basalt stones of Nan Madol began sometime in 1180. AD, although many scholars find umbrage with this given the fact that to move these giant hunks of rock from tiny island to tiny island and then carve them into a series of intricate channels and platforms is a feat in and of itself. Its purpose is somewhat clear though. Nan Madol appeared to have housed the ruling elite caste of the ancient Sudilair dynasty of Pyonpei where it was used as a political and ceremonial seat of power, essentially housing a vast network of small floating platforms and islands that formed into a rich majestic capital city carved from black stone. Stone. Yeah, I don't want to make any assumptions, but there are many, many more answers to be revealed by Nan Madol, and it's no wonder that Lovecraft himself found an ancient kind of inspiration from it. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the Sahama Lines. And whilst you more than definitely have probably already heard of the Nazca Lines of Peru, I'm going to go one further and highlight the equally perplexing mystery that is the Sahama Lines of Western Bolivia, because boy, oh boy, are these things a head scratcher. The Sahama Lines are a network of thousands, possibly tens of thousands thousands of perfectly straight paths that were etched into the ground by the indigenous peoples of the Americas for more than 3,000 years that were situated near the volcano of Sahama. Unlike the Nazca Lines though, this particular network covers an area of over 22,500 square kilometers which is approximately 15 times larger than their counterparts in Peru. And what are they? Well, no one knows and we may never know, but what is clear is the startling precision in which they were made. These thousands of individual lines, each 3 to 10 feet in width, are almost perfectly straight mile after mile despite the ever-changing rugged terrain of the highlands, which would have been quite a feat for modern humanity, never mind an ancient indigenous people without the means to advance construction techniques. These geoglyphs were most likely created through the process of scraping away the dark, oxidized rock of the volcanic surface to reveal a lighter sediment beneath. You 
You see, despite all of these enigmas of ancient history, the real question is why did these people go to such lengths of time and effort to create them? What were their intentions of preservation? Who would have seen them or used them? Now, there are many leading theories, the most prominent of which is that the Sahama lines were used as a pilgrimage route to a series of sacred sites. But yeah, I have no idea. I really have no idea. I mean, I want to know, but will we ever?